Committee's Democratic Congressman Ro Khanna of California. Congressman, it's always great to see you. Thank you so much for getting up early uh, to be with us uh, today. Uh, let's start with infrastructure and some of these progressive concerns. You've been a progressive leader in the House, uh, and there have been some significant concerns that even if they are able to get a bipartisan deal out of the Senate, that it could come over to the House and run into a little bit of trouble. Uh, what's your stance and, and what's your thinking on the best way uh, to move forward uh, in this, uh, in terms of this two-pronged strategy? Casey, there are three broad concerns. First, if there's no significant climate legislation, it won't pass the House, and the House isn't going to take the Senate's word for it that if we pass something bipartisan that we can pass reconciliation later on, it has to be simultaneous. Second, we're never going to support a tax on the working class instead of a tax on the ultra-wealthy. That's forcing President Biden uh, to break his own pledge. And so if the gas tax increases there, that won't have the votes. And third, you can't increase taxes or user fees on electric vehicles. So these are the three broad concerns that I'm hearing uh, among progressives. So given all of that, do you see any path forward for these bipartisan talks? I mean, the pay for is, I feel like we've been talking about these tax ideas now uh, for weeks and essentially gotten nowhere. Casey, I don't unless they change the pay for I mean, look, my district, uh, as you know, in the heart of Silicon Valley, $10 trillion market cap. The wealth increased 30% during the pandemic. The, the, the wealthy in my district are benefiting the most from infrastructure. Many of them, frankly, they're willing to pay more tax. So why wouldn't we increase taxes on them first instead of putting a pay for on the backs of the working class who have to commute to work? And I just think the progressives look at this and say, you are taxing uh, the wrong people in this country and you don't have uh, climate uh, infrastructure. Uh, this is not the right way. What's your sense of where the White House is uh, on this? Because, I mean, the Senate did seem actually to be moving forward with some of these uh, things that you're discussing, the gas tax, the user fees on electric vehicles, until President Biden came back from Europe and uh, his officials seemed to get involved and say, no, -uh, that's not going to work for us. Is that a reflection of what's going on uh, in the House? And, and where do you think they're ultimately going to come down? I think the president substantively is where the House is. He wants something bold. He wants to address climate. He wants the taxes to be on the wealthy, the ultra wealthy. That's what Janet Yellen has said. But the president, as you know, Casey, by temperament, also wants to bring this country together. He really wants to see something bipartisan work out. So he's letting the process play out. I just don't think that that genuine desire for bipartisanship is consistent with what he actually wants to see policy-wise, and, and there is a diversion. Do you think that the, how significant would you say is the, is the frustration currently among Democrats on the Hill, and, and particularly progressives, with the pace of this? I mean, do you think that President Biden is letting these bipartisan talks drag on too long? Casey, look, the president has an enormous amount of goodwill on the Hill for two reasons. The American Recovery Plan was a huge success. The president's done a phenomenal job uh, in getting shots in the arms of Americans. Actually, a third reason is the president has conducted himself very well on the world stage. So I think he has a lot of goodwill. Uh, I wouldn't say that there is some anxiety, but I do think there is a resolve that while we have both chambers and this president, we will get a major package which has green infrastructure and attacks on the ultra wealthy through uh, and we're going to continue to push to make that a reality. Uh, finally, uh, sir, there was some back and forth late yesterday about the idea of doing a select committee to investigate January 6th. Uh, first, uh, there were reports Pelosi was ready to go ahead and move forward with it, the, the House Speaker. Uh, but then now it sounds like she's still trying to make up her mind. Uh, what is your sense of where that stands? I mean, is there a support in the Democratic caucus to have a select committee and to get that started pretty quickly? There is, and ultimately, I do think the Speaker will uh, have a select committee if we can't get the bipartisan votes in the Senate. The Speaker is an institutionalist. She loves uh, the Capitol and the democracy. She's served for over 30 years in this institution. She wants this actually to be bipartisan. This isn't about politics for her. Uh, but given that there has been no movement uh, in the Senate, uh, she will have a select committee if there's no other option. Uh, it looks to me like we're headed towards the select committee option. All right, Congressman Rokana, thank you so much for being with us this morning. We really appreciate it.